Welcome, Kieran Bailey from Experience 101 uh, to Hospitality Talks. Thank you so much for um, giving us your time. Um, just a brief introduction from you to anyone out there watching who doesn't know who the boy Bailey is. Um, well, exactly. If you could just <laughs> let them know who you are, um, what you do, where you come from. <laughs> well, first of all, they need to get on social media a little bit better as a starting point. Um, so yeah, Kieran, some people know me as the boy Bailey. Some people know me as the other half of Experience 101. Um, I've do all sorts with industry always been in uh, hospitality um, I spend my days between facilitating around customer experience and leadership and then also delivering what I personally think are amazing events to be honest with you and I think that's kind of that's my two real joys in life I absolutely agree having been to several of those events so Very Kieran fun. tell me what was the initial impact of the coronavirus situation on, on your business and the businesses that you're working with well, I mean, from two, it, looking at it from both perspectives, from the facilitation, um, obviously, you're kind of you're looking and thinking straight away, no one's coming into a room, no one's to be getting close to each other, physical distancing was going to be a key part of what was going to be happening in the strategy. So that showed that immediately that was going to be coming to an end for a wee while. Um, and I guess that we were very much aware of this because we had an event planned for March 18th. So we've been thinking about coronavirus from about January the 1st. Um, and it's been a massive part of our conversations for a very long time now. So the impact for a starter was event cancelled. You know, I mean, we kept it going as far as we possibly could do, but that's that's a, a real problem for us. Even before the government said um, that we shouldn't be having gatherings, we were having the difficult choice of do we get 100 very cool industry people together and put them in a room? Is that a smart choice? And the answer was no. So we had to make the decision to uh, postpone the event. And it is very much postpone the event, you know, because we're uh, obviously we've got plans for the future. But right here and right now, the impact is nothing's bloody happening. Um, I'm talking to a lot of people um, who've got loads of free time now, and I am one of those folks. So I guess realistically, I kind of I find ways to give free, give give stuff away for free, which is the, mm -hmm. the easiest answer. But if you said to me, Kieran, how is life right now? I'd say it's a bit shit. <laughs> it's a bit shit and it's going to get better. <laughs> I think we would all agree that life is a little bit shit at the moment. I don't think that that's, that's up for discussion at all. OK, so we know what the initial impact was. Where are you now? You're saying you're, you're giving things away for free and you're, you're giving your knowledge and your time and your expertise. Um, how, how, does, how does that look for you and, and with the people that you're, you're working with and your clients? I guess uh, for me, it's about just being as available as it possibly could be. So in the sort of first couple of weeks of the um, from when the prime minister said, let's just stop going out um, without actually kind of making some solid decisions. Obviously, people were feeling that pain and struggling to kind of think, right, how do we do this? So initially, it was about helping people to look at how do they operate in a physical distance and uh, kind of way without closing their business down so it's all the little things you could think of um like kind of thinking about how the restaurant's going to be laid out thinking about kind of where, what their teams are going to be doing thinking about kind of what their teams are going to be wanting from them so helping businesses and helping the small suppliers that i work with because i'm a big believer in working with those little independent retailers independent brands who are looking to grow because they're the future of our industry so did some work with those guys um, that obviously then kind of dries up because, well, everybody just closed. So then it's like, right, OK, what else can we do? Well, as I'm about to demonstrate in the next nine minutes, I love the sound of my voice. So I find a way to just put that out to action. So we put out some great podcasts uh, called Surviving the Shitstorm, which I think you've just got to take the ball by the horns and just put it out there and say, what can we do? First guest on that was Jonathan Downey from Hospitality Union. Um, which for me set the tone of what we were going to be aiming for. And it was about it's about looking for those people in the industry who've got ideas, who've got kind of a little bit of hope and inspiration to share and giving them a platform, really. So whilst, yes, I do love the sound of my voice, it's not about that. It's about finding the opportunity for the, the people who really can share ideas and inspiration. So the mm -hmm. podcasting has been good. Um, still doing one on one coaching with some people. As I said, you know, it's, no one's got money to pay for that, but they still need the help at this point. Um, so it would be very easy to sit in the corner and think, well, I'm going to keep it to myself. And when they've got some money, then I can come back. But there's no value to that at all. My instinct, and I think the instinct of most of the people that I know and work with in this industry, in hospitality full stop, really, is to help. That's what we do. So we yeah. find a way to help people. If that's podcasting, if that's one-on-one -on -one conversations, if that's video calls with lots of people involved, that's what we do. And also, 
it stops me from going a little bit mental, which is always a good thing. I thought you already were a little bit mental, but um, but even more so, stops you from going even more so. It's okay. a slippery slope, Katie. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> Um, okay, so to talk to me then about future. What does the future hold for Experience 101 and for you in, in your role of coaching and, and for the industry as a whole? So I guess if I look at it from three, the, those three points, from for me personally, you know, it's just more, more and more video content is going to start getting put back out there. You know, for the last two years, I've been sharing my ideas, sharing my opinions. Some people love them, some people disagree with them. I'm okay with that. That's absolutely fine. But I think we've all got an opinion that's comfortable to be shared. And it's built on, for my, in my case, it's built on 25 years of practice. So it's not just, I think this is a good idea. It's actually, you know, what we've put this into play. So fairly consistently going to be putting out more video content, most certainly going to be putting out more podcasting content and just having interesting conversations with people because there are a huge amount of folks out there who, again, can add some real value to it. So we had a lady called Kim Scott, who's the author of one of my favorite books, Radical Cat which will stun you that I have one of my favorite books is called Radical Candor because it kind of just cuts to the chase. And it's about sharing communication with people, but doing it from a point of caring personally, but challenging directly. So it's not about kind of just, you can't be one of those people who says, I just say what's on my mind. I, speak, I say how it is, because that's garbage. You know, that's just you making yourself feel better. It is about actually sharing from a pace of actually, I want you to do better. I want to see you see the opportunity. So putting that into work, through the videos, putting that into work through, as I say, regular calls with different people. I've got four or so different people that I mentor as well throughout the industry who are all looking to grow their kind of their brand and their business in a similar kind of way, to be honest with you. Um, so working with those guys, the boy Bailey will always do that. You know, that's just, I've got a voice, I've got an opinion, and I'm going to put it out there. Experience 101 is a slightly different kettle of fish. You know, it's, it's myself and Chris on that one as the co-founders. Um, we are both very much doers by nature. Uh, so the idea of not being able to get stuff done and not being able to make stuff work and make stuff happen is just, he's sitting in Cardiff at the moment, just in Caerphilly. <laughs> and he's got surrounded by his three kids and that's all he's got for company. And that's not enough for a fella, if I'm honest with you. I mean, he won't appreciate me telling you that, but it's just not enough. It's not enough. I'm lucky because I don't have children. I'm all good with that. I can work when I want to work. But EXP, we are now shifting, obviously, you know, we're going to be going in the next few months, we're going to be delivering some different speakers. So next week, uh, Wednesday, the 22nd, we've got our first speaker called a guy called Jim Knight, who wrote, again, a great book called Culture That Rocks. Mm -hmm. And he was the L&D uh, director for Hard Rock Cafe uh, worldwide. He's an amazing dude. He's very American. You know, I love him for that. He's very excitable. You know, if, if we get excited, he like, amps it up to about 15. Um, but he's going to talk about culture and he's going to talk about kind of why the culture of your business is so important right now. And I think when we think about kind of what it looks like coming out of the other side of this, the culture of our business is absolutely integral. If yeah. we haven't put the work in up until this point, we're fundamentally going to be knackered anyway. Now we've just got to build on what the good work that we have done. So he's going to be talking about kind of how we can still engage with our people at this point, even though they're furloughed and they're off out in various different corners of the world. We can still connect, we can still share, we can still keep those relationships alive. Because for most of us in hospitality, the majority of our relationships come from our work. You know, most of us met our wives, partners, boyfriends, whatever. That's where it was. That's how it happened. So Jim's going to help us talk about that. And that for me is a big part of where we're going to be focusing our attention. It is that kind of thinking about the culture of your business and thinking about what it's going to look like when those doors do reopen. Because no matter how it feels right now, those doors are going to reopen. That's it. You know, we sat and I had one of these conversations with Mark McCulloch, and I think he uh, he he was on one of your put one of your pods yeah. and we talked about it. He was at first of all, he was amazing. You know, that's that's always good. You know, yeah. I mean, as the other half of the uh, finest proclaimers tribute band out of there that we form, he does well. I give him his dues. <laughs> Two big blokes with beards and glasses. You know, we're ticking boxes. <laughs> But we were talking about this and we were talking about the fact that this is a massive opportunity for reset for the entire industry. We can look at the way that we work. We can look at the things that we do and we can do better. There is a huge opportunity here for us to just take a little step back and think, right, OK, that was good. 
but what could we do more? What could be, what, how do we amplify that up just a little bit further? So when those yeah. people walk back through the door, the guests, they walk back through the door and they are going to be reticent about doing that. There's going to be, I, I reckon, you know, it's going to be a slow open. There's no getting around that at all. I think it's going to be a very measured and controlled response from the government, which I don't give them credit for much, but I guess I'm going to have to give them credit for that because it's going to need to be. Yeah. Um, but I also think that even if they didn't do that, I think the public's going to struggle with the concept of having been told for six weeks at least, stay by yourself, do not engage, do not communicate, do not get in touch, do not do not come together, to then flip it back on this head all of a sudden because there's going to be some fear. Yeah. So we're going to have to challenge that. And we're going to have to try and give people reasons to come back into our businesses and come back into our brands. And I think most of us have got good reasons in the fact that if we deliver amazing food and amazing service, then the experience will just draw them in and the memories of that. And I think I've been talking over the years um, about the concept of kind of making memories, not stories. Yeah. If we've been making memories with our people and with our guests and with our team, they're going to be sitting there and they're going to be they're going to be relying on those memories right now to yeah. get them through this dark time. So if they're yeah. doing that and they're keeping it in their head and they're keeping it at the forefront of their thinking. Well, when we get back in front of them, get the opportunity to get back in front of them, all we're going to have to do is throw 50p in the meter and hopefully they're going to come back on board. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting time. I think there's no getting around it. I think those folks who are looking at and thinking, yes, reset, do better, be better, because no matter how good you are and there are some amazing people out there, we can always be better. I think yeah. as Leon have demonstrated right now, as Tim at mm -hmm. Yummy has demonstrated without a, a shadow of a doubt, there are yeah. people out doing amazing things who are now looking and thinking, right, how do we make this better for next time round? Mm -hmm. I spoke a lot there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Kieran Bailey from Experience 101, thank you so much for your time, for your energy and your passion. And I look forward to having a, a meal and a glass of wine with you when all this is over cannot come soon enough Katie it cannot come soon enough amazing thank you much for having me I do really appreciate it and uh, for letting me talk about the things that I love because I don't get to do it enough right now so it's always a bonus to be able to do that you're very welcome thanks for your time thank you love